So Manny Arcade is a post office in downtown Hong Kong. And I got interested in this because it just, there's stamps with that postmark on it that you see at the bottom there. And it sort of raised my curiosity. What is that? When I was first collecting, I didn't know much about the geography of Hong Kong. And I was just <laughs> finding very interesting cancels, treaty ports and branch post offices and all these different things that happen in Hong Kong postal history and philately. And so I found out that Man Yi Arcade was an office building in, in the center of the city. And uh, so I, I just accumulated cancels and eventually got some covers and um, found that there is a lot of interest to this little post office in the middle of the city. And uh, so this is the story of it. Um, I'll start off just to give you a perspective. I think you all know the uh, where Hong Kong is located, but just for the sake of good order, there's Greater China, and Hong Kong is right at the south part there. Um, here is a map of Hong Kong, uh, the whole territory, and that little island at the bottom. So that little island, that's the main city of Hong Kong. That's the downtown. That's the original place where the settlement came and the British colony uh, was established. And that little corner there on the left side of that little bay that is the center of the city that's sort of like the downtown and the bottom map is a modern one showing the actual location of the man Yi building and it's it's on devoe road the address is 68 devoe road and it, it the building is a whole block long and backs on to queen's road which is considerable higher elevation because if you can imagine this is all going up a big uh, hill so anyways the location is a very strategic one it's right near the central district where all the government offices the financial centers uh, all the main business so the location would be akin in toronto to being like between you know parallel young and avenue road right in the middle of everything so it's a very strategic location so here is what it looked like um the original building was in this kind of block um we don't know exactly when that was built I, i've gone through architectural uh studies of the building and they they take it back to a picture with nine, uh, 1948 but it obviously was built a long time before that but when they modernized Hong Kong in the 50s, that building came down and this one was built. And this is the one that had the post office. So this is what we're talking about in this talk. Um, that building was taken down after um, after a while in, in the early 90s. And there's a new one, which you'll see a picture at the end. But anyways, that is the building. It's about 15 stories. And there's the mezzanine which is where the post office was. And uh, this building had quite a reputation because, um, first of all, here's a picture of the post office. The main is where the post office was. And the big deal about this building was it, it was the first building in all of Asia that had a moving escalator. And you see the picture in the lower bottom here uh, a whole gang of people riding the escalator because it was such a novelty in 1957. Um, it was 1960 that they opened the post office there, and it was a substantial one. It had eight counters, and it provided all the postal services, uh, not just taking letters, but it had all the all the different postal services that are mentioned there, including licensing of radios, which in the British uh, world was a thing that you had to do. You had to to get a license to have a radio. Um, so we'll start with some descriptions of the cancels of Man Yi Arcade. This one is the uh, first day. It was opened on the 19th of September, 1960. And this is a letter that was sent, an aerogram that was sent to the United States on that first day. And that sort of interesting kind of cancel, it's, it's, it's a larger circle than the usual circular date stamps. And it's a, it's a thing called a skeleton cancel. That's the sort of 
appellation we give to that style of cancel. There were a number of Hong Kong branch post offices that used that. Usually, while they were waiting for their regular double ring cancels to come in, and you'll see the examples of those in a minute, but these skeleton cancels were relatively short-lived. Uh, for Man Yi Arcade, it was from the 19th of September until the 16th of November in 1960. So that's a relatively short period. They're not rare by any means, but they're very desirable. And it's especially desirable to get a, a commercial cover used on the first day of the post office being open. So here's another example of that skeleton cancel, nicely done. One of the problems with that cancellator was that the the numbers for the date were very uh, they slid a lot and and it, there's a lot of indistinct dates because the especially the day of the month and also sometimes the year would sort of slide around so it's very hard to tell the cancel so uh, the actual date so this one is a really nice one where it shows you know uh, 25th of October 1960. Um, I'm going to come back to this cover in a later slide for another reason. Whenever I show a cover, I'll, I'll talk about some of the postal history aspect, and in this case, the rate. So it's a double rate letter. The rate was $2 per half ounce for airmail to the United States, and this has got $4 and then $0.40 cents for registration fee. So it's a correctly rated double weight letter. So this is the cancel that was the true one that they wanted to use for that Manny Arcade branch and it finally came in and um, they have that pretty bold double ring sometimes they're lighter for the different ones and you'll notice that little index letter there one at the bottom and uh, six at the bottom here so there's six varieties and they go from index number one through six uh, one to three was for regular mail. Four and five were generally for registered mail or parcels or odd things. And six was a very special one that is almost never seen. It's it's It wasn't used much. We don't know for sure, but it must have been used by the postmaster himself and only for special occasions. I have probably... 200 covers and, and a whole bunch of stamps with those cancels on it. And the one with the six, I only have three of them. That tells you the, an idea of the scarcity of them. We also have a, a nice variety of registration labels for Manny Arcade. Um, when they started, this is 1961, um, and you see it's a, a index four. Um, they didn't have Manny Arcade name on the registration label. They got some from Hong Kong. And Hong Kong F is the one that is documented as being uh, part of Manny Arcade. And that's proven by the fact that it's a Manny Arcade cancel with the Hong Kong F registration label. It's a local mailing of a reg registered letter. So the rate would have been 10 cents for local and 40 cents for uh, registration, making up 50 cents correctly rated. Here we have some more of the varieties of registration labels. Um, a fellow named Ming Chang, uh, the late Ming Chang uh, from Philadelphia, USA, wrote a treatise on all the registration labels of Hong Kong. And Manyi Arcade has about 13 different kinds. It's a really complex study. And when you consider that the post office was only open from 1960 to 68, it's, a, it's unbelievable how complex that was, but what that tells you is there was a lot of mail going through there, and that is because it was such a central location. A lot of people, first of all, in the building, and second of all, people all around the neighborhood would go and mail their letters, including commercial mail and personal mail and parcels and all that. And that uh, caused a lot of registration to be used. And then so you have these different kinds of registration labels. I don't show them all because it's uh, you know, a brief study, but um, you have the different color and the two-line Manny Arcade A. Uh, here's a white one, Manny Arcade in lowercase letters uh, on a white background. Here you have a light green 
uh, label with a two-line Manny arcade. There's also varieties in the lettering. Sometimes it's smaller letters, bigger letters. You can you can go crazy just collecting the registration labels of this thing. There's also some unusual ones, and this is a provisional uh, registration label, and it's only known to have been done uh, used in March of 1964. We don't know the exact story of it, but a guess would be that they ran out uh, a day or two and decided to just print some locally and get somebody to do a, a quick makeup of the registration label. I've seen about three covers with this, and um, it comes apparently in, this is a sort of light green one. There's also white ones. So uh, not much is known of how they came about, but it's a, it's a really lucky one to have. I, I had a different one that I stupidly traded away with somebody, and uh, then I couldn't find another one for about 10 years, and I finally got this one, fortunately, on eBay. This is an interesting rate. It's a little bit um, unusual because it is a parcel front. You could see by the tape at the top and the bottom that this was taped to a package of some sort. And the rate is $5.60. And I was trying to figure out that rate. And it is not easy to figure out because the airmail rate, and it does have an airmail thing. If it was second class airmail, it would be a dollar per half ounce so that would make five dollars uh, but the registration should have still been 40 cents so it's either 20 cents overpaid for convenience or it might be some kind of a parcel post rate and parcel post rates for hong kong are not documented so it's it's something i i don't really have an explanation for that rate unless it was just overpaid uh, on second class airmail there's some unlisted registration labels so Ming Chang's book, as well as a lady named Susan Crew from the Hong Kong Study Circle in the UK, documented all the registration labels that they had. Because I've been studying this so intensely and collecting this so intensely, I have found some uh, undocumented uh, registration labels. That first cover I showed with the uh, Manny Arcade skeleton uh, cancel um, this is a Hong Kong G, which was not known before I saw this. I think it, it's, I've seen more of them. It doesn't seem to be rare, but it wasn't listed neither by Chang or by Susan Crew. And then Hong Kong 43, this is one of a kind. I haven't seen that used uh, in all the other covers I have. And this is a different kind of a light green with Manny Arcade in one line in very thin letters. And again, that's one that's not listed. So uh, it's fun to get uh, new discoveries. And I'm sure there's more to be made because this branch seemed to have a lot of registered mail. But they also had parcel post. And this is a, an interesting story of Manny Arcade. So the typical parcel post chops that started in the 1950s and in some cases in the early 60s, was this very large, dark violet ink um, rubber stamp. And it, it had fat lines and, and a very heavy font. And they, they had them for all the branch post offices, of which there were by this time about 40, 30 or 40 branch post offices in Hong Kong. So finding an entire marking of that uh, parcel post rubber cancel is really hard. This is from a piece. I have a collection of pieces with all the different um, parcel post cancels of that type shown. And uh, so I was lucky to get a full uh, marking. Usually it's on one stamp and you just see a little bit of it. And if you're lucky, you could make out which branch it's from. And also about 90% of them are from the general post office on, in Hong Kong. So finding these uh, branch post office parcel cancels is a nice is a nice hunt. Uh, I'll go to the lower document uh, before I talk about the other piece. This is a, a dispatch note for parcels, and you see the Manny Arcade parcel label thirty three seventy, and the Manny Arcade cancel there. Um, parcel dispatch notes or bulletin d'expedition were a UPU requirement to uh, be sent 
to the country of destination for all, all the parcels going there. And they're very detailed forms uh, wanting to know everything about the sending, uh, who's the sender, who's the consignee, that's obvious. The weight, in this case, it was one pound and six ounces. Uh, the rate, which is shown here, is $5. And it's going to a very interesting destination in today's world. It's going to the United Arab Republic, uh, to Gaza. Gaza was a part of Egypt at that time. And the United Arab Republic in that period was a an am amalgamation of Syria and Egypt. They decided they were going to have a merging of their countries so that they could uh, fight against Israel. And that political merger lasted for a couple of years. It didn't last very long. But they produced a lot of stamps uh, in the name of UAR, or United Arab Republic. And here's a parcel that was sent to Gaza, which, uh, like I say, at the time was part of Egypt. And um, it's, it's a really cool piece of uh, postal history. Uh, there's no stamps on it. Sometimes there are stamps on the back, uh, usually paying duty or taxes at the destination, but there's no postage stamps on these. These are just a, a document that accompanies parcels. The one on the top right is even more uh, obscure and difficult to find. It's You see the purple marking, and you can just barely make out that it's Man Yee Arcade here. These purple, they're triple ring cancels. There's an inner ring and a fat outer ring and a really skinny uh, ring right beside it. So it's a triple ring cancel. They're undated on purpose. And um, this was during a period in China, in mainland China, when Mao Zedong was in, uh, introducing reforms to their financial system, their uh, agricultural system and trying to build up their um, manufacturing. He called it the Great Leap Forward, and they did all kinds of crazy things that ended up having massive upset of their civilization. There was starvation. There was really a bad situation in China for about uh, at least 10 years in that era. And people in Hong Kong had relatives there, and they would send small parcels, little packets of food and clothing and anything that could help people survive there. And it was not really appreciated by the People's Liberation Army or the Communist Party of China, but uh, people were sending stuff to their relatives. And, and so very few of those cancels survived because whatever got there uh, they would have used up everything. It wouldn't have been saved or collected. So finding anything with a, a cancel like that, even though it's undated, is a really cool thing. And it is in the right period. This would be in the mid-60s. Um, I do have them from a few other branches, but it's, it's, a, it's a really scarce item. And this is on a piece. So it might have been a favor cancel because it's on a piece of sort of cardboard. A lot of these packages were mailed in uh, burlap or in uh, in cloth bags. But anyways, it's a period of time when the Hong Kong population, which was relatively wealthy, was trying to help their Chinese uh, brothers and, and relatives uh, going through a very tough time. So a vista reception or acknowledgement of receipt is a system in the post office where when you mail a registered letter, you want to get proof of delivery by a signed card being returned to you, uh, signed by the addressee to say, yes, I got the letter. Uh, and when they do that, they have to charge extra for the postage. It's a basically double the registration fee. And they have to mark the letter. And it's either sometimes just handwritten double registered. And in many cases, they have these markings AR standing for acknowledgement of receipt or in the UPU standard language of French, avis de reception. This top one is the one that is listed in, in Proud. The Proud uh, has the postal history references of all the cancels and markings for all the British or most of the British uh, Commonwealth and colonies and definitely has a really big volume on Hong Kong. And this one is listed as the only one. But again, since I've been collecting this intensely, when I came across this cover with an AR marking, I noticed it was a little bit off. It's not like a perfect rectangle. It's a bit trapezoidal in shape. 
And sure enough, when I did the measurements, this, this is a different AR marking. So it's an unlisted one that uh, is a nice discovery. So when you send those AR letters, these are the cards that accompany them and that are signed by the addressee and then returned to the sender to show proof that he's received his letter. And so this is an example of a local one. It was mailed from Manyi Arcade to Kowloon. And um, it's all in Chinese, of course. Uh, but it was you could see that it was mailed on the 25th of January and received on the 26th of January. And it was signed. I don't know why they had the 24th date there. But anyways, there's a signature of the person who received it. And th this would have gone back to the sender. And again, having an AR card with a branch post office canceling the stamps on it, those are the 40 cents that they had to pay for, for the privilege of AR. The letter would have been, Frank, 40 cents registration, and then these extra 40 cents would be the charge for the AR service. Um, there's lots of these with just the Hong Kong General Post Office, uh, but any one of these with branch post offices is uh, very scarce and very fun to find. And then you have receipts for sending things. So if you, there's two classes of packages being mailed within the Hong Kong system during this era. There's something called a postal packet, and there's also something called a parcel. A postal packet apparently is just a small parcel. It's bigger than a letter, probably fatter than a letter, but it's not big enough to be called a parcel. And I don't know what the weight distinctions of that are. I haven't found the regulations in any document that defines postal packets versus parcels, but they definitely have all kinds of documentation naming postal packets. So this first one at the top left is a certificate of posting a registered postal packet. So they're sending a little package to somebody and they want it to be registered. Uh, it's got skeleton cancel which is really cool on one of these things it looks like it was probably a philatelic mail because this peter sheck the person that's going to is a very well-known stamp collector in hong kong of the time the second one on the right here is certificate of posting a registered postal packet by air so they had a different one in sort of an airmail colored uh, light green printing and it even has an ar marking on it showing that in uh, june of i think that's 1964 um, a registered air postal packet was mailed to a fellow named david hk chewy in montreal so you get a lot of information from these tiny little slips of paper um, and then at the bottom part we have a couple of parcels that were sent to a fellow in the philippine islands barra claude city in philippine islands and uh sent from manny arcade certificate of posting a parcel and then if you sent the parcel by air again it would have that light green airmail style and it's going to the same guy in barra claude city philippines at a different time it's a different sending so there's obviously uh, a correspondence there uh, but these again are fun to collect with branch post offices there's tons of them around with just the hong kong general post office marking but getting any branch post offices with these is really fun and especially getting one with an ar marking or the skeleton cancel that's even better and uh, how about a reply coupon most people know about international reply coupons but in the british commonwealth they had that system too uh, but it was called a Commonwealth Reply Coupon. And I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this in a dealer's box. Uh, it was issued in Kuching, Sarawak in uh, July 1964 and received in, or I don't know when it was received, but it was cashed in at Manyi Arcade Post Office on the 24th of July, 64. It's got the index five, which tells me it was receiving sort of the same kind of service as a registered letter would receive. Um, and um, it's just a, a wonderful document to have with that branch post office cancel. It also shows you 
when you intensely collect a branch, and it could be from any country, there's a lot of things you can collect, not just letters and cancels on stamps, but these parcel cards, these certificates of posting, the reply coupons, there's all kinds of super cool stuff you can collect to uh, go crazy on a branch. Coming closer to the end, I'm going to show a little bit of postal history now. Here's a second-class airmail letter. So the, the regular rate was $1.30 per half ounce, but if you wanted to uh, save some money, you could send it by second-class airmail, which meant it wouldn't go on the very first available flight, but it would go according to the convenience of the post office. This one's going to Germany in uh, 1963. And um, there you have your Manny Arcade postmark on that, covering that Anagoni issue stamp. A really interesting one to a scarce destination. A dollar thirty. There's your dollar thirty per half ounce rate, uh, and it's going to Liechtenstein. They called it Vadu, Switzerland, but in the upper line. It says first to Liechtenstein. So I don't know why they put the word Switzerland there, although it might have been rooted through Switzerland because there is no actual airport in Liechtenstein. And uh, it would have had to go either via Austria, which I think is the more normal one, or Switzerland to get there. But anyways, again, when I saw this, it was a dealer saying, oh, here's a letter from Hong Kong to Switzerland. I thought, oh, cool, Switzerland, that's a pretty good destination. But when I read that second line, Fürstentum Liechtenstein, I said, aha, that is, that is a spectacular destination. It's a completely commercial cover. It's not a contrived uh, mailing. So that is a really cool, uh, rare destination. I mean, it's modern postal history, but some, some of those scarce destinations make modern postal history just as interesting as your Victorian and, uh, and early stuff. Short paid mail. I don't have a lot of short paid mail from uh, Manny Arcade, but here's one example that they even had markings to show deficiencies. So he paid a dollar for regular airmail service to Canada, and it doesn't say second class. So they caught it and said, the, the post office caught it and said, if you want this to go by regular airmail, you got to pay another dollar. And this is the marking that says it. And it, uh, and it apparently was paid because they wrote the number in there. And um, it actually got there in a relatively quick time on the 12th of March, 1968. This was mailed on the, the 6th of March. So 6th of March to 12th of March from Hong Kong to Toronto. That was a pretty good transit time. It's the only piece of short paid mail I have from uh, Manny Arcade. Another thing that I got very recently, like in the last uh, six months, was a meter. I have seen lots of meters from different Hong Kong branches and Hong Kong General Post Office. Never did I ever see a Manny Arcade meter. Well, here is one, uh, mailed in 1964. So it's got that Hong Kong G unlisted registration label, which makes it even nicer. And it's going to the Bank of Montreal in Montreal. Uh, has some nice receiver markings. And uh, again, with a collection of about a couple of hundred Manny Arcade covers, this is the only meter I've ever seen. So um, on the 22nd of June, 1968, Manny Arcade had its last day of operation. It was a Saturday. It had been announced in the newspapers that the branch was closing we don't know exactly why, because the building stayed on until the 1990s, but the post office was moved down the road. It was still on DeVoe Road, but uh, at uh, a place called DeVoe Road Post Office. And that was the one that was taking over all the mail traffic from Manny Arcade. It is a mystery. I've tried to study, to research, to find out why that happened, but there's no records of that. I mean, there's just records that the Manny Arcade Post Office would close on the Saturday, and on Monday, the DeVoe, DeVoe Road Post Office would take over, and that's where you got to go from now on. That was documented in the newspapers, but, but there was no editorials or anything to say why that happened. So 
that was the end. So eight years, less than eight years in existence, and really a lot of uh, a lot of action there with uh, parcel post, registered mail, lots of varieties of registration labels. It was a busy little post office. So um, that's the end of the talk. I just show the current menu building. So when they tore down that old one, the second one that I showed you, um, they eventually in 1997 built a new one. And by that time, I had been traveling to Hong Kong. And um, my interest in the Manny Arcade took me to the address, 68 DeVoe Road. And there it is. I was in that building and in the mezzanine there, where the post office used to be in the old building, is now a Starbucks. So I sat there and drank a coffee and thought about what a pleasure it would have been to have it, having been in that building in the old days and uh, go to the post office. So that's the end of my talk about Manny Arcade of Hong Kong. Thank you for listening.